But I ha- oh no, I have to hit continue. Oh. I got there. <laughs> Great. Right. All right, we're gonna be making some pizza because why learn robotic skills when we can learn cooking skills? Yeah. All right. Um. Let me make sure that I have at least somewhat correct the amounts of things. I know that I've already measured things out, but I wanna make sure I have them correct when I give them to you. Um, first is flour, and that is six cups of flour. It's also about uh, 796 grams, because I like to use grams because it makes things easier. Um, and also a little bit more precise. Once you've done that, we're gonna add to that some salt. That is two teaspoons of salt and like 16 grams, I think. And some sugar and that's, if it'll come out, uh, come on. Got there. Uh, that is what? Also about two teaspoons of sugar. Um, that one is not necessarily needed for the dough, though uh, being able to give it as some food for the yeast allows it to rise a little bit better. So I definitely recommend it. Um, speaking of, we'll put in the yeast. This is half of a package of instant uh, fast dries yeast or instant yeast, they're basically all the same thing. Um, as long as you know that it's not bad or like you've just recently bought it and kept it in the fridge or something, it's very unlikely that it will uh, be at the point where it doesn't work because this yeast strain is pretty robust. So uh, a lot of recipes will say that you wanna add it to some water and let it bloom which basically has it sit there so that it, um, you can see if it's active. But most of the time, those are pretty active yeast. And so you're normally pretty good without doing that. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I want to make sure, I think I'm missing something. That's okay. I'll look quick and if I can't find it, I'll do without. Yeah, let's just do without. All right, um, next we've got water. So that is two and a half cups of water. And I can't remember how many grams um, because my, my memory isn't necessarily great on that. And so we're gonna start by mixing this up. Uh, I'll use my hand normally uh, as long as it's clean, which it is. Uh, but I normally will use my hands because I'm gonna to need to use my hands anyway to knead after. Uh, but if you have like a, a mixer or something, mixers are a pretty good way to, to mix things up. I was looking for this little scraper that I have that I can actually get the sides of the bowl scraped down, but I don't know where I set it and it's not where I thought it would be. So that's okay. Well, We'll make do with what we have and scrape as best as we can and get as much of the flour off the side of the bowl as we start to knead everything together. Robert, um, do you have experience using uh, power drills as a mixer? I have not used a, a power drill as a mixer, though I may recommend one, you know, if, if you think about it, because pretty pretty strong things and can really really do a good bit of mixing <laughs> um though you, you want to make sure with a lot of things bread is a little bit harder to do it with unless you're using something maybe as powerful as a, a drill um but you want to make sure that you don't end up over kneading things they'll end up becoming too tough now Reds are a little bit more resilient to that than most other baked goods because you're trying to develop a bunch of gluten. Um, pizza is a, a bread dough. So you're trying to do the same kind of thing in, in a pizza dough. You're trying to get as much 
of that gluten development as you can. Um, the method that we're going to be using here is a, a cold fermentation method. Um, and so what that basically means is that the majority of the rise and gluten development of this dough is going to be done in the refrigerator. Um, basically keeping it at that cold temperature causes the yeast to rise slower and allows for a, a greater development of flavor than the dough. Um, it also allows the gluten to form a little bit on its own so you don't have to knead it quite as much, which is always nice, especially when you have a little bit of a stiffer dough like this one, it becomes hard to knead. Uh, yeah, let's see, almost, almost there on this. Still a little bit more flour. You wanna make sure that you get all the flour mixed in. Um, sometimes just because of different humidities and things like that, you may notice that you need a little bit more, a little bit less water. And that's partly why I like to use my hands as well is just because I'm not doing this in a big enough batch where it necessarily matters to use some sort of electric mixer and I can actually get a better feel of the dough and getting that better feel allows me a, a little bit of a better idea of how it's going and whether or not I need to add anything to it. Um, also do this with basically any of the breads that I'm making. Uh, though this one is a little bit less strict uh, just given the specific recipe that we're going through. This is meant to be a, a very accurate to New York style pizza dough, um, which is the kind of pizza that we decided we're gonna do. Um, can be used for other things. I've used this dough for all different types of pizza. It works pretty well for pretty much all pizza. I've used it for um, like cinnamon rolls and things like that as well, just because it's, it's a very basic kind of dough recipe may not necessarily turn out to be a great bread if you tried to just use it for bread, but it, it works pretty well for a lot of different things. And now you can see that we've gotten this mostly put together. And so before I go and finish kneading it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon. Uh, you want to try whenever you're making a bread to add those fats near the end. I can't exactly remember the reason why at the moment. Um, but what you'll see I'm doing first here is I'm, I'm kind of punching my fingers into the dough and making these little dimples. It'll make it easier to incorporate that little bit of oil that we're going to add in. Once you've got that in there. Mm. Again, dimple it maybe just a little bit more, really help kind of push it in. And once you've got it mostly in there, you can kind of stretch the dough and mix it however you need to, to be able to help kind of incorporate it the rest of the way. Um, this definitely takes probably the most time of this whole thing uh, because you still need to do a little bit of gluten development by hand from kneading. Um, so it, it definitely takes a little bit of time to do that, but better gluten development you have uh, in, in your, your dough is gonna give you a much better pizza at the end. So it's definitely worth that, that bit, of, bit of hand labor. Um, yeah, let's see. Also, if anyone has any questions at this point, just feel free to ask. All right. I think that'll about do what we're gonna do in the bowl. So once you've gotten that mostly needed, we're gonna put it on the counter to be able to help finish it. So one of the things that I like to do is this slapping and folding technique. So basically you'll have the dough sort of set out. 
you pick it up on its sides, you slap it onto the counter, you sort of fold it over, you repeat that, and that helps give a, a more consistent direction to your gluten and not just adding that additional gluten, helping kind of put those, those protein strands in the same direction help give a bit more consistent dough as well. Um, this is a pretty good way of doing it. But we'll also uh, knead it a little bit with our palms. So the other way is you can basically just have it there on the counter. And this is a bit more like what most people probably think of when they think of kneading. You just sort of push it back and forth like that. And this is definitely, as I said before, one of the most uh, strenuous parts of making any bread, not necessarily just pizza. Uh, and this room is already hot because of the oven. So <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely a little warm, but it's makes a good pizza. So. Like a good workout, a little hot yoga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I get a good workout every week making bread. <laughs> this is now the second batch of pizza dough I've done in the week. So now I'll have pizza for a month. I should also add that this recipe is actually going to make uh, four regular size pizzas. Um, I'll typically end up actually making eight. It's about an individual size pizza. Uh, you'll see it when I finish just about how big that is because I'm gonna do one of the eighth pieces. Uh, but we're gonna end up dividing this into some pieces so that you can actually uh, see sort of what that process is like. Yeah, so now that we're we're getting pretty smooth on this dough. Um, I don't know quite how well you can see it, but it's starting to get pretty smooth. I'm gonna do a couple more of those slap and folds. And there we go. The dough is pretty much ready. Um, and so what we're going to do next, like I said, we're gonna cut it into some pieces. Now I've got this, this nice bench scraper because I actually do a bit of bread making and it becomes very useful. Uh, but if you don't have one, you can, you can break it apart by hand or something like that. It works pretty well. Um, but like I said, we're gonna cut this into about eight equal pieces. Um, yeah. And I'll just shape one or two, just so you guys can get an idea of about what it takes. It's not super difficult either. Um, basically, you'll just kind of roll it in your hand and you're gonna start to try to form a ball with it. So as you can see, the nice little ball. Now I'm gonna use my bench scraper to help kind of get some additional tension on that. So basically I'm pushing the end in sort of on my hand and I'm twisting it off and that helps get a bunch of additional tension on the dough. Um, if you don't have a bench scraper like this, that is okay. Um, if you do another dough like this, what you'll see we can do is basically all, all give myself a bit like the nice okay sign. Um, put the dough in my hand like that. And then I'm going to sort of pinch and push the entire thing of dough up into, I'm, I'm trying to make sure you guys can actually see, uh, but you pinch and sort of push that entire thing of dough up into your hand and that will help end up giving some of that additional tension as well. Um, There's some uh, advanced level techniques going on here. Oh yeah, you better believe it. No, really, they're they're pretty simple things, and all those small additional little 
little steps really, really help make things turn out a heck of a lot better. Um, so yeah, I'll try to show that again. You basically just kind of push all of that dough up. You get a little bit of a nub sort of at the end, but you end up rolling it out again. And that little bit of additional roll helps uh, tighten it back up a little bit. You can also, I know I was using the bench scraper, but you can also basically use your other hand sort of like a bench scraper. And so this is doing basically the same thing. I'm, I'm pushing one hand in and using the other one to sort of help push it and get it tighter. And yeah, I'm going to stop there and move these to the side and cover them with something so that they don't dry out because I want to make sure that I don't take a whole ton of time in doing this. So we're going to set those aside. Um, what I would recommend is at that point, if you put one of those finished dough balls into a, a Ziploc bag or like a quart size bag with a little bit of olive oil, uh, you'll then put that into the fridge and I'll take one of those out. Um, so like I said, you basically put it into a little bag and with a little bit of oil just so that it doesn't stick too much. You put it in the fridge for two to three days. Now I know that sounds like a while. And if you want to have pizza, um, you probably don't want to wait that long. So you, you can use this dough earlier than that. You may need to knead it a little bit more than we did. Um, and you'll still need to let it rise for a little bit of time just because of the amount of yeast that we have in there. Um, but like I said, letting it sit cold really allows it to uh, ferment a little bit slower. It really gives a deeper uh, flavor within the dough and um, allows that gluten to form a little bit better. So you end up getting a, a nice uh, pizza dough sort of consistency. Now, one thing I didn't do that I probably should have is typically you would like to take this dough out a little bit before you use it. I just took it out of the fridge. Normally you wanna take it out about the time that you turn on your oven. Um, so that way it can get to room temperature. It's not necessarily bad that it comes out cold. It just means that the final dough is more likely to have some, some little bubbles in it, um, like on the outside of the dough. Some people like that. I, I actually do kind of like it. So I'm okay with taking it out cold like that. Um, but if you don't want that, then you want to make sure that you, uh, you, you take it out about the time that you preheat your oven. Speaking of, you want to preheat your oven pretty hot. I've got mine about as hot as it'll go. It's around 500 degrees. Um, that may sound a little scary to some people. It, it shouldn't be. Your oven is meant to be able to go up to that temperature. Um, the scariest part may be just being confident enough to deal with something of that temperature, but we'll talk about how you can make that a little bit easier for yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm going to set the dough aside. And I think what we'll do, we'll start with this. So we're going to end up making some sauce. Uh, just a basic tomato sauce. Um, I've already got a can of tomatoes open. Um, they're San Marzano. They're peeled, but they're whole. So we will need to break them up a little bit. Um, if you have a food processor and you really don't like chunks of tomato in your sauce, then you're probably gonna wanna make sure that you, you really uh, hit that thing but I do like some chunks in my sauce. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just use a whisk. These canned tomatoes are typically pretty soft. And so they, they crush down pretty easily just with a whisk or a, a fork even. Um, but we're gonna start by cutting some basil. So I've, I've stacked the basil up sort of into pieces. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
roll it up pretty tight. And this just makes it so that when we end up cutting it, you can cut it pretty easily. Um, so now you've got this, this little bundle of basil that's a little bit easier to cut into. It gives sort of ribbons of basil. Um, if you want to have it finer than that, you can end up cutting it again after. We'll do a little bit of that here. So you can cut it now this way. Uh, you'll see that it's definitely harder to do when you don't have it bundled up like we did uh, just before this, but it does come out pretty good. I'm also gonna wash my hands. I still have a little bit of flour on them. So I wanna make sure that I get that off. Um, but alongside a little bit of basil in the sauce, we're also going to put some garlic. Uh, I've got some garlic cloves, basically just gonna, just gonna smush them and you can either chop them up real fine or you can use a little garlic press. I normally don't use the garlic press unless I'm trying to do things kind of quick. Uh, just because it's it's a pain to clean, so unless I need the food soon, um, I'm I'm better off taking the time cutting the garlic than I am uh, cleaning that press after. Uh, but I think we'll we'll cut one of these cloves of garlic, and then the other we'll we'll put through that press. So to be able to get the skin off the garlic, I'm basically just crushing them. I know I don't need them whole, so I'm okay if they get crushed like that. It'll also make it a little bit easier to cut after. Um, basically, I'm just gonna go pretty quick. And that cuts it up pretty easily. Just like that. And I'll put that into the container that I already had a little bit of garlic in because camera magic. And like I said, I'll put some through this garlic press and just press it a little bit and a little bit more. Oh no, one of my headphones came out. All right. So now we've got garlic, we've got basil. Um, the other things that we're gonna add to this sauce is a little bit more olive oil and a little bit of salt. So I'm going to get the container I'm gonna use. Now I've happened to pick this container because I know it fits the amount of sauce that I'm gonna make and then I can keep it in this after. Uh, so it just makes it easier on me, uh, but do whatever works for you. So yeah, tomatoes go in. You can see they've still got whole tomatoes. Basil goes in, garlic goes in, salt, that may be a little too much salt, we'll see. And olive oil. And like I said, I'm just gonna use a whisk and basically just break up the tomato about as much as I would like. Oh, I guess you can't see that. That may, that may help. But yeah, it really does not take that long to make uh, a pizza sauce. Sometimes people like to cook their sauce before they cook it on the pizza. Um, I personally am fine with just tomato going straight onto the dough. I think it ends up tasting a little bit better because you haven't cooked that sauce quite as much. 
though some people like that extra depth of flavor that you get from a tomato sauce once it's cooked. Uh, but this gives a little bit of a, a fresher taste in my opinion. And I think it makes the pizza a little bit less like dense and, and uh, unhealthy tasting, which will definitely happen with uh, the pepperoni that we're gonna add on. <laughs> Yeah, I'll set that to the side. And now we've got a sauce. I'll move these. And I've already cut some pepperoni. Uh, you can buy already cut pepperoni. You can cut some pepperoni. I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. Um, and yeah. I've also already shredded some cheese and I put it in here. Um, but I think that about covers us. So now we can start to actually assemble the pizza. So take out the dough. And this is the part I will admit I am very bad at when it comes to a pizza. I am very bad at shaping pizza. Um, because I have no real technique to it other than I'll basically start by just kind of pinching through the middle and pinching outward just a little bit. Um, you can see that basically I'm trying to keep a crust on the outside. If you press everything, then you're just gonna end up having a flatbread. Figure that's probably not what you want in a pizza. Um, but you'll see that sort of as I continue, it'll start to stretch and gravity will actually get it to come down a little bit more. But once I've gotten it a little bit, I'll put it in my knuckles and sort of stretch it, turn around and stretch. And again, just sort of let gravity do a little bit of the stretching for you. Definitely helps some. Um, yeah, I can already see that the, the dough is getting pretty thin. And like I said, this, this specific size dough is pretty good for a single person kind of size pizza, unless you're one of those people who will eat an entire pizza. And if that's you, then go for it, make a bigger pizza. Um, but this is typically a pretty good size for me when I end up making my pizza. So I typically will just stretch this to about where I, I personally like it. And you can see, you can see that it's really thin in there. You can almost see through it, but it's not breaking. And that's because we've gotten so much gluten development in the dough from it sitting in the fridge as long as it did. And now, I don't have a very round shape at the moment, uh, but I'll, I'll sort of improve that as I put it onto this pizza peel that I have, because why make pizza if you don't have a pizza peel, right? Now, if, if you don't have one, obviously uh, it's, it's not a common thing for everyone. I just happen to make a good number of pizzas. Uh, if you don't have one though, you can use either the back of a another pan or just any sort of any sort of thing that you can you can transfer things on. I had a little bit of cornmeal on here to make it a little bit easier for me. Um, I'm also just going to stretch this a little bit more. I think it can be a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, you can use even like a plate basically to to get this to work, you can use just about anything when it comes to transferring your pizza dough. I may even recommend that you could just use the pan that you wanna cook the pizza on. Now, one other thing that I'll mention, I currently have a, a pizza stone in the oven. That's just meant to be a very hot thing that I'll put the pizza on, so that way you can get a very nice crisp bottom on the pizza. Uh, you can put a pan, like a, a thick kind of baking sheet into the oven at the time that you turn it on. 
but you want to make sure that that's in there when you've turned the oven on so that way it can get really hot as well it'll end up giving that that really thick or that really like crispy crust on the bottom of the pizza yeah once we've gotten that sort of out the way that we want um grab a spoon so i can get it for the sauce I'm still going to actually stretch this out a little bit more. I still think I can go just a little bit bigger and thin out the outside of the crust just a little bit. It looks like it's a little bit big. Yeah, that'll be all right. But now you'll, you'll take some of your sauce and put it on there. Now this admittedly may have been a little bit too much basil for the sauce, but that's okay. It'll still taste very good. And what is pizza without a little bit of basil? You know? So now you've got your sauce, got some cheese, sprinkle some of that cheese on there. And like I said, I, I actually shred and uh, grated this mozzarella earlier. So it's sticking a little bit, uh, but it's nice and fresh mozzarella, so it tastes really good. And I'll get my pepperoni, put that on there. Now I cut these pepperoni pretty thick, and you'll see that when they, when they come out, they'll end up sort of cupping, which is, a uh, pretty common thing on the New York style pizza. Uh, but yeah, that looks like a pretty good pizza, ready to go into the oven. So what I'll do, just so you guys can, can see and hopefully not hurt myself, I'm going to put the, the pizza stone here and uh, and hopefully transfer the dough successfully onto it from here and then put it into the oven. All right. So like I said, very hot, keeps a lot of heat in. It allows for that nice thick crust on the bottom of the pizza, but just sort of transfer that on there. And this will go back into the oven. And it'll be in there for about seven minutes, eight minutes, and then I'll look at it. And if I think it needs a little bit more, give, give it a little more. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait on that and I'll set a timer so I don't forget. Hey, Google. Set a timer for seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes, starting now. Um, but if you guys have any other questions, I'm gonna finish shaping these doughs that I had so I can, I can actually put them in the bags and have them ready for another, another pizza adventure in the future. We're just gonna kind of wait here till that's done. Do you guys want to see it? <laughs> is that is that sauce enough? Like, is that for like the same amount of dough made or? Oh, uh, great question. I've I've never really paid attention. <laughs> um, it, it's typically pretty good for the amount of pizza dough that we've made. Um. Like it, it's a pretty close balance between them because I've never really realized, hey, I'm, I'm out of sauce, but not out of pizza dough. Um, though I've also even used the sauce for just anything that a tomato sauce is good for or have cooked it a little bit and made it into a, a tomato sauce for like pasta or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's it's pretty good for about any any use and so sometimes I'll 
I'll run out of sauce just because I've used it for something else and not for the pizza. And sorry, I didn't give better measurements on that one. That one I do a little bit more uh, by sight sort of free handing. Yeah, are you, are you uh, I can um, the, the source source code for the dough on the GitHub. <laughs> source code for the dough well, on the, the GitHub. Recipe. Sorry, I. <laughs> um, I can probably send it to you, and you can add it to the description of the YouTube video if you want. That probably be better. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hopefully I grabbed enough of these bags. Yeah, this, this is what we call a, a soft cut. So in, in the end video, you probably don't need this whole part as we're waiting for the dough. This is the behind the scenes Q and A that you guys get to have for being here in person. Uh, but if you think I'm going to do any any kind of editing on this video whatsoever, <laughs> I am not surprised, and I wasn't actually expecting anything. That's sort of why I was thinking maybe I'd make an additional pizza before we started and just be able to have it on the side so that we didn't have to wait this time. But I figured I wouldn't go that far. I figured this was probably enough. I need to have two pizzas to eat. What's your yeah, favorite? Yeah, I topping? don't need. What's my favorite topping? Yeah. Um. So as much as I was saying, I I know that I do it poorly. I really do like Neapolitan pizza, and so that is classically just uh, buffalo mozzarella because it's a little bit like moister. That, that pizza, I should start by saying it's, a, it, it's almost soupy, which is a strange way to describe a pizza um, and may not necessarily be the most appetizing sound, but it's, it's very good. Um, but it's, it's classically just buffalo mozzarella, you drizzle some olive oil, and then uh, basil, whole basil leaves, either on the pizza before you cook it or right after it's come out of the oven so that they just wilt slightly. It is pretty good. <laughs> um, but like I said, it, it's, it's very difficult to do correctly based off of the standards and requirements set forth by those above in Italy. How do you feel about um, cheese on bottom, sauce on top? Cheese on bottom, sauce on top? I think it depends on the pizza, because that's pretty classic of, of deep dish. Um, and I'm a fan of deep dish. It's not my favorite. It's probably not even close. Um, but, but deep dish pizza is good pizza. All pizza is good pizza. I'll stand by that statement. I feel like deep dish is more of like a pie, though. Yeah, it, it's, it's less like a pizza than any other kind of pizza, in my opinion. It's more like a casserole for you. Yeah, because you have like one slice and that's like, that's a lot. But like for pizza, you can have like four or five and you're like, ah, it's okay. Yeah. Any of those people who who bake as much or more than I do, how's how's my pizza skills look? Jules, um, Great. Yeah, Jules disappeared. I don't know where she went. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> She's just gone. I don't know. Maybe she went to go grab the ingredients to make her own pizza. Maybe. I mean, probably not, but yeah. <laughs> All right. We're actually almost to time. There's a couple more seconds. 
and I'll maybe give it one more minute. Hey, Google, add one minute to my timer. Done. One minute added to your seven-minute timer. You've got one minute and 25 seconds to go. Great, thanks. Uh, I also have a little bit of Parmesan cheese that I bought today that I'll probably grate on top. But I just got it, so it may be tough to cut open with plastic because it's a pain to do. And I'll do it off the camera in case something goes wrong. <laughs> So nothing should, it's just that plastic is more painful to cut into than any of the other stuff I did. What's your pizza stone made out of? Um, it is just some form of stone. I don't actually know for sure what kind of stone they use for it. Um, also, I'm just going to grab this now and I'll, I'll set it probably on the plate I have that on, um, that cheese one, just so you guys can, can see it. Yeah, like I said before, I uh, it's probably a little too wide of a a crust. Um, I I didn't get it quite as far out as I probably should have, but I mean, there's the pizza, and you can see, like I said, the the pepperoni sort of cups up when you cut it thick like that, and it keeps all the oil in it, which is very unhealthy, but tastes very good. <laughs> um, so now I'll just take a little bit of that Parmesan cheese. And probably a little bit of red pepper, because red pepper is always good. And I'll let it sit there a little bit to cool down, but now I've got dinner. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for attending the pizza lecture of all things. <laughs> that looks so good. Thanks. Like I said, I'm, I am a little disappointed at how, how thick I got the outer crust. Um, because typically I get it a little bit thinner than that, stretch the dough out a little more, but. It looks like it like shrunk in the oven. Or like, you it know. It probably did a little bit. Um, oh, I guess I'm also a little sad that this side uh, <laughs> caved in a little bit. Mint stuff oozed out some. But yeah. I'll, uh, I'll send Ben the recipe to add to the video and I can write a quick thing for a sauce that's similar to what I made, but maybe not exact because like I said, I think it may be, I think I may have added a little too much of some things. I'm gonna actually get a spoon and see what it tastes like. And I'll, I'll make that judgment now without it being on the pizza. Because the pizza will hinder it just a little bit. Hmm. No, it, it's pretty good. I'll, I'll stand by that. I'll still probably send something a little different just because it's, like I said, I did not measure at all. So 
I just knew it was a can of tomatoes and then a couple cloves of garlic and so on and so forth. Yeah. Sauce is relatively straightforward. Yeah, it, it's not a difficult thing to do. If you want to do a cooked sauce, it definitely is a little bit more in depth because cooked tomato sauces to really give them their flavor, they take like hours of sitting there. Um, but I personally really like a, a raw sauce on my pizza. It's all about personal preference and that's where mine lies. It's also just easier, which is nice. Sure. Um, also worth saying, you can probably see here, like all those tiny little bubbles. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, that that's what I was getting at with taking it just cold out of the oven. You, or out of the fridge, not out of the oven. Uh, when, you, when you take it out of the fridge cold, you end up getting a bunch of those tiny micro bubbles on the surface of the pizza crust. Oh. Yeah. Good. I mean, it, it doesn't change too much to it other than a little bit of look and a little bit of texture. Like it, it does make it a little bit crisper because you've got additional surface area, but not like drastically so. Mm. Yeah. I'll probably uh, just cut that up now. But yeah, I definitely put more sauce than I probably should have. It's a, it's a soupy pizza. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of the soupy pizza. Yeah but it's, it's a soupy pizza, like a key with a fork and knife kind of pizza. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, if, if you didn't put quite as much sauce as I so liberally did, um, and if you stretch the dough out just a little bit more to get a little better coverage of it. Uh, but this is almost a hybrid of a New York pizza and a Neapolitan pizza. What's the verdict? Other than still being very hot. Um, <laughs> it tastes good. Tastes good. Awesome. I may make a second piece. <laughs> <laughs>